In this video, I want to have a look at vector projections. So informally, the projection of a vector A onto a vector B is going to be the shadow cast from A onto B. So if we have a look at our diagram, we've got a green arrow here, that's our vector A. The yellow arrow along here, that's our vector B. And what we've got is all this light shining onto B and it's perpendicular to B. So as it shines perpendicular to B, this vector A is going to cast a shadow and that shadow is our projection. So we're going, always going to end up the projection being parallel to that vector B. So the way we write that is the projection, so PROJ, of vector A onto vector B. So B is a little subscript there. So the projection of A onto B. The other ways you might hear that phrase are the projection of A in the direction of B or the component of A in the direction of B, or sometimes you could even hear the term the scalar resolute of A in the direction of B, but they all mean the same thing, the projection of A onto B. To make things a little bit simpler, we usually represent our two vectors sharing the same tail. So if we've got a vector A here and a vector B going along here, then again, if we're imagining light shining down so that it's perpendicular to vector B, then we're going to end up with this line coming down here, so perpendicular, and the vector that that sort of cuts off there is going to be our projection of A onto B, so that shadow that's cast. So that's going from this tail to this point here, and I've just written, drawn it slightly underneath so we can see it a little bit clearer. A second example of that, in this case, our vector A, when we project it down, so we shine that light down, the shadow cast is actually going to go past the end of vector B. So that's okay, we just extend our vector B out a bit longer and that vector going from that shared tail out to that point where the extended vector B would meet that shadow, that's going to be our projection of A onto B. In our third diagram, we have A going off in sort of a different direction again. So if we shine a light perpendicular to B, we're not actually going to end up on our shadow landing on the original vector at all. So what we need to do is extend that vector coming out the other way, shine our light down and this green arrow here. So again, from that shared tail at this point here, that's going to be our projection in this one. So what you can hopefully see from all of these is that our projection is always going to be parallel to the vector B, but it could be longer could be shorter, could be going in the opposite direction, but it's always going to be a scalar multiple of that vector B. So two things to know is that if A is the zero vector, then the projection will also be the zero vector. And if A and B are perpendicular, then the projection will be a zero vector as well. And that's because in both of those cases, then the vector A isn't going to cast a shadow on the vector B at all. So we've had a look at geometrically what the vector projection looks like, but now I want to have a look at how we can actually find that new vector that we're talking about. So we're going to start with this diagram here. We've got two vectors, A and B, with a common tail, and we've got theta being the angle between them. So we're just going to introduce a couple more points. P is the tail, and Q is going to be this point here. So the first thing we can find is the length PQ. So to do that, we've got a right angle triangle. So using right angle trig, we can say that PQ divided by the length of A, so the length of the hypotenuse, the length of that vector, is going to be equal to cos of theta. If we rearrange that then, then we'll have PQ equals the length of that vector A times cos theta. So we said earlier that the vector from P to Q, that's going to be the projection of A onto B. Now we know it moves in the direction of B, but it's a different length. So what we can do is we can find the unit vector of B. So if we just find the unit vector there, which we represent with a B with a little hat on it, then we can multiply it by the length PQ that we found by doing this. Okay. So to do that, what we can say is the projection of A onto B is going to be equal to PQ, so the length PQ, multiplied by the unit vector B. So we already know that PQ is the length of the vector A times cos theta. And our unit vector B 
is going to be the vector b divided by its length. Okay, so we're going to leave that there for just a minute, and we're going to have a think about what we know about our dot products from uh, um, earlier lessons. So if I took the dot product of my vector a with my vector b, that would give me the length of a times the length of b times cos theta. If I were to rearrange that to make cos theta the subject, then I would end up with um, a dot b, so the dot product, divided by those lengths. Oop. So I'm going to substitute this back in here for my cos theta. So I'm going to have the length of a times the dot product of a and b divided by their lengths and multiplied by that unit vector. Now there's not much in there that cancels out, but the length of a cancels out with the length of a there. So if I go and simplify that, I can write it as the dot product of a and b divided by the length of b squared, because I've got one there and one there, and multiply that by the vector b. So this here is the formula for our projection of a onto b. So two things we need to know before we jump into some examples are about multiples of projections. So if we are trying to project lambda a, where lambda is just a number, so a multiple of that vector a onto the vector b, then that's the same thing as finding the projection of a onto b and then timesing that answer by the scalar lambda. Uh, it's also distributive. So if we're trying to find the projection of u plus v onto the vector b, then we can do them each separately. We can find the vector, sorry, the projection of u onto b and then add the projection of v onto b. Our first example asks us to find the projection of a onto b and then also to state the length of that vector. So I've got our formula written up here to help us out. So we're going to have the projection of a onto b. We need the dot product first. So to find the dot product, we multiply the x components together and then we add and multiply the y components together. Then we need to divide by the length squared. So the length is where we do the square root of the x squared plus y squared. Because the whole thing's squared, we're gonna leave that square root sign off. So I'm gonna have minus three squared plus five squared. And then we're multiplying by the vector b. Okay, so if we simplify that, we'll end up with nine over 34 times minus three, five. Now you can just leave it like that, or we could multiply through. So I could have minus 27 over 34 and 45 over 34. Now that's a bit messy. If that number out the front was a whole number or a nice neat number, I probably would multiply through. Otherwise you can just leave it at that line there. So that is our projection. The second part asks us to find the length of that vector. Because we've already found the projection, what we can do is we can say the length is equal to, and we're gonna do the square root of these. So minus 27 over 34 squared plus 45 over 34 squared, which would give us, if we simplify, nine over the square root of 34. Now, if we hadn't already been given that projection, we could go through and find the length doing the dot product of A and B divided by the length of B. And it would give us the same answer, but because we'd already found it, this is the easier way to do that question. Our second example asks us to find the length of the projection of A onto B if we know that A is four units long and the acute angle between the two vectors is 30 degrees. So we're going to find this length slightly differently to the last question. If we think back to how we derived the formula for our projection, we had we found the length of that distance PQ. And the way we did that, we found that length was the length of A multiplied by cos theta, where theta was the angle between them. So because we have those two pieces of information given to us in this question, this is the way we're going to find that length. So we're going to end up with 4 times cos 30, which would end up giving us 2 root 3. Okay, so that's two questions on vector projections.